All right, it took three times to call it's, uh, Glenn White. He's the new head coach at uh, Cloudland, and many people will remember him at Unicoi County, uh, also at Happy Valley, and I was uh, intrigued to learn uh, in the newspaper article about your uh, hire with the Highland Highlanders, Glenn White, that uh, there was also another team outside the area that I guess you began your head coaching career at 30 years ago. Where was that at? Because that was news to me. Okay. That, that was in 1989. Uh, a school about the size of Cloud, Cloudland. Uh, great, great little school. I uh, just a young pup then, though. But it seems like a lifetime ago. And you were actually coaching back in 19... 19- yeah, coach, as far as a high school coach, but, but the system allowed the volunteers to start. So I started at Love Chapel uh, Elementary School in 1981. And then by 83, uh, Coach Lynn Fisher and I, Scott Witch and we coached the junior high team, the seventh grade team. We went undefeated with that team. And then Doug Cooper was with the eighth grade. We had a real good year there. And then by 85, by the time I graduated, Coach Thompson hired me as an assistant to the freshman team. So that's where I got my high, that's where I started my high school co- coaching. And 85 was the last time that Unicoi County, you were at Unicoi County, I uh, presume right. there's the assistant coach. That was the last time before this year that a playoff victory was secured right. by the Blue Absolutely. Devils. I, I want to take a bit of time to introduce, years ago, I had been hired uh, to be the play-by-play broadcaster. It was 96 of the uh-huh. Unicoi County Blue Devils. And uh, basically, you know, Irwin being community Irwin is and all this, which right. is somewhat insular. Uh, you know, there had been some people even at the radio station that had made me uh, feel, a- I remember going to the Happy Valley practice that week, Glenn White was the head coach at the time, and he sat me down, and ha- and if there was anyone who was welcoming, it was Glenn White. I-, I will never forget this. He told me the history of Unicoi County football. He told me that my high school baseball coach, Lou Thornberry, had been a great uh-huh. star and gone on to Duke. I had no idea. Uh-huh. And then that week, Happy Valley actually beat Unicoi County when he called for a reverse that actually put the Warriors in the playoffs over the Blue Devils, and that 96 team was the last team at Unicoi County that had a winning record until this season. And I know he just opening himself up to me like that. I've always been appreciative. My question is, you still got that reverse in your playbook? We're going to see it at Cloudland this year. We got something like that. You know, there's no doubt about that. But I do remember that game. That was a great game. And I thought Coach Larry Howell, he was the head coach at over here in I came from the same era. And uh, I thought he did a great job, and I ended up coaching with Larry. And so, you know, like you say, Larry had, I always called Larry Don Shula because he went for about 25 years <laughs> until Coach Rice this past year had a win in school. I, I have a fond love for the school, but I'm not looking back. Uh, Cloudland has, has given me this opportunity, and now I'm a Highlander, and uh, I'm going to do everything in my power to continue the success. So, really, I'm just looking forward to well, now I know Cloudland, I mean, heck, they've put, produced uh, sizable linemen that have gone on to play. Uh, ETSU had a lineman from Cloudland this year. That's really impressive for a 1A school. But it has been said this is the first time that you were really at a school that is sort of expected to win. It's a 1A powerhouse, uh, you know. And so I know that the middle school program, which you want to revive, has gone away. But over the years, this is Roan Mountain, Tennessee, population 700. Why is it that Cloudland has had good football teams in 1A and been one of the two premier, I think, 1A programs in East Tennessee along with Greenback? What is it that has made the... So, you know, Cloudland is the last of recent team that made, made it to the Clinton Bowl. You know, they did that in 2001. That place up there, they are hard-working, blue-collar Christian. Okay, you've got a boy that may come in there with a truck that's a used truck that that, he, that his parents made him work all summer to get, and it just it's just it's just the work ethic. It's amazing, and and I thought that we have everything we need, very little of what we want, and I think that's what makes the Kyle and Highlander football program so 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 tough. You sound like you're Rocky Balboa preparing to fight uh, Ivan Drago there, Glenn White. I mean, but I want to, 
I don't know. Does Unica not have that work ethic, though? I mean, some of your uh, rivals in, in 1A, uh, you know, is, is this the only program there? It would seem like it could have to be something a little bit more. I, uh, as far as I know, I've seen what Coach O'Brien has done at Unica. I'm just throwing that out as a, no, you I'm know. Going in. He, he's doing everything right now. He's sharp. His teams are sharp. I, I can't speak on that. The only thing that I see is that I see a work ethic at Cloudland that's that's second to none. Uh, they're hard-nosed kids. I've been there for two and a half years. Not one time have I had a problem out of young man as far as being disrespectful or anything of that nature. And and you're right. There's, I think women breeds that. Women breeds that success. In the last two years, we were 18 and six. Mm-hmm. And and wow, I'm, I haven't been 18 and six since I was with Coach Thompson in the mid 1980s here. So. So, but uh, also, you look at a 200 student school, probably 85, 90 boys in that school, and we got talent. We've got an offensive line that can start for anybody. There's no doubt in my mind about it. Those, and, 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 and we'll be successful this year because of that offensive and defensive line. So, uh, that's all I can say. But, but, but you can look at the parents, the, the fathers that may come to practice the to see their son maybe about 5, 20, 5, 30. You can see they've been workers. You know, this is, these are blue-collar workers. And I think it just has... Is that, you know, very us against them almost, you know, that you speak of... Uh you know, mentality, if you will. And uh, so I understand what you're saying there. I want to ask you, were the defensive coordinator, I remember having a conversation with you last year, and I said, you know, I know Mike Lunsford's going to retire. It would seem to probably leave with Mike Lunsford. What changed your mind? Well, you know, basically, of course, the resignation here was was just unexpected. You know, there's a lot of things that happened that you know, I don't want to get into it, but there were some things happened that I should have dealt with, and I didn't. And then the Happy Valley came that night. Well, I didn't know they were that good. You mean Unicoi County here. That's yeah, what you're that's referring here now. Right. Okay, yeah. No, I was at, okay. So this is your last head coaching right. job and all that. You're referencing so, that. You know, we all just, after that game, everything came together. It was probably the best that I ever done. So, and that still, you know, that still bothers me. I don't know if I made the right decision there, but I knew that, it's a about football that I want to fix, and I'm not a quitter. I've never been a quitter, and so uh, I, that was the big, the big sticking point for me. And I felt that if they offered it, because I had told people, no, I'm not going to leave. I'm, I'm ten years here in Newport County. I'm like from the host system. I'm like third in sen- seniority, and I thought I'm set. You know, I, I just got a couple more years to retirement. But I knew that if they'd offered the job down deep, that I was going to take it. And uh, my motor is running 100% right now. I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity, this this last opportunity, to uh, to uh, be a successful head football coach. And, and, and I'm going to be. Yeah, I'm not, that's not boasting. But uh, I think that I've got the foundation throughout these last 30 years that I've been around a lot of fine football coaches, and I've learned from them. So... I'm just looking forward to getting into the arena and getting after it. Well, I know that uh, the, the loss you speak of is a blowout loss. I think it was 2016 to uh, Happy Valley. I want to say the score is like 63 nothing, and it, it was 62 nothing. It was a very yeah. uh, disappointing game because at the time, you know, I think that a lot of people are making the playoffs in 500, right. and I do give you a lot of credit for having that, and I think that you created a lot of the momentum in which the athletes were coming out to play football at Unicoi County, whereas previously they weren't. Hence, you had, historically, probably more than a few 0-10 seasons uh, that you wouldn't like to have, you know, that sort of thing. So, And then Drew Rice came in. The uh, weight room, the facilities now there at Gentry uh, Stadium are, are very good, and it seems to me that the... Yeah, it seems to me the athletes want to come out for football. Now, you're talking about a middle school program at Cloudland, who's the uh, the Big Sky Commissioner, and uh, I'll tell you about that. But I want to say this. Uh, tell me a little bit about how Cloudland lost their middle school program and what you're going to do to bring it back, because this sounds like the same path you did at Unicoi. Okay. Uh, my first full year there, we were in 2017. And, and, and Cloudland had probably about 21, 
21, 22 junior high football players at sixth, seventh, eighth grade. Uh, we were six and two. I think we won our league. We host a playoff stuff, junior high playoff game. Everything looks real good. Coach Potter and Rick Burnsfield was coaching. My father did a great job. And then uh, last year, uh, and me being on the outside, I'm on the outside. I don't know the integral parts of it. I just don't know what happened. I, I just can't answer that. Uh, I don't know why they didn't come out, uh, but they just didn't come out. They had about eight to nine kids show up, and so uh, they decided to cancel the program for 